In this Mithras rule video, I am going to be having a look at those two spell effects, intensity and magnitude. My name's In Rules, and welcome to the In Crowd. Hello and welcome back. Yes, it's been a while since I made one of these rules videos for Mithras, but they are back via popular demand. Well, one person asked for them, so I, I'm taking that as a demand and probably popular. But rather than doing the long rules videos that I have been doing in the past, there has been a request for shorter, more focused videos. And so this video is going to address just that sort of delve into the rules. Remember, if there are any rules that you would like me to have a look at in these Mithras rules videos, then do let me know in the comments below. Okay then, let's get on with the explanation, shall we? Let's look at intensity and magnitude. So every spell in Mithras shares these common terms. It's magnitude and it's intensity. And these terms are quite different and yet both explain the, the power of the spell. So magnitude, this is how difficult it is to dispel the spell. So basically, the higher the magnitude of the spell, the harder it will be to dispel it. So if you take a spell, for example, neutralize magic with a, and the sorcerer is casting it with a magnitude of five, then this would eliminate, remove, dispel, neutralize any spells of magnitude five, the magnitude that the neutralized magic is cast at, and below. So five, four, three, two, and one. Now, the intensity of the spell actually relates to the, the effect that it has. So the higher the intensity of a spell, the bigger, the grander, the most spectacular the spell effect would be. So it's easy to explain this if you think about the miracle, which is the Aegis spell that um, the character Bartleby the Theist in our campaign uses. Now Bartleby cast this spell, this miracle, and it has different um, intensities. At an intensity or one or two, the Aegis spell, which appears like a glow, um, glowing shield, um, produces a small shield at intensity one and two. However, at intensity seven and eight, it appears at an en as an enormous shield. So you can see that as the intensity increases, the, the effect or the power of the spell also increases. Now, each school of magic treats magnitude and intensity in a slightly different way. But before we get into that, can I please ask you to consider liking, commenting and subscribing to this channel. I produce regular videos about Mithras as well as actual play sessions, personal vlogs and videos about GMing in the series aptly named The Gibbering GM. So why not subscribe and hit that bell button so you get a notification when the next video goes live. And if you would like to provide some extra support, then the link to my Patreon account is down in the comments below. And as well as the usual tiers there, there are some new ones relating specifically to role playing games. And these include benefits that allow you to see the campaign notes, the information which is stored on the cam about the campaign that I run. And even there are other tiers that allow you to have the benefit of looking at my adventure notes once the adventure has been completed. So 
why don't you go and check them out and see if there's anything over there that, you know, I can tempt you with. OK, then back to magnitude and intensity. So each school of magic treats magnitude and intensity slightly different, as I mentioned previously. So let's start off with folk magic, the low level spells, the hedge wizards, what we in the campaign called minor blessings and cantrips. These are low level spells and the magnitude and intensity reflects this because every folk magic spell, no matter what or how it is cast or who casts it or it doesn't matter on the roll or the magic points or anything all folk magic spells have a magnitude of one and an intensity of one so really and truly it's really easy to dispel them and in a similar way the effects of the spell are not that great but can still be useful now, for the theists, it's slightly different. The magnitude and intensity are calculated in a different way. Basically, you have to imagine that theists' miracles, the spells that they cast, are actually um, powered by their deity, god or goddess that they actually worship. And because of this, their intensity and magnitude is based off their devotion skill. So what happens if you want to um, know the magnitude or the intensity of any of the spells or any of the miracles that theists um, cast? You have to take one tenth of the devotion skill and this rounds up in the normal way and that will provide you with both the magnitude of the spell and its intensity. Now, as I previously mentioned with Bartleby's Aegis spell, the intensity can produce fantastic effects or really powerful magic. But the theist has the ability to use less of the intensity. So Bartleby could um, conjure up an enormous shield or he could conjure up just a small one with the intensity of one or two. It's completely up to him. The magnitude, however, how difficult it is to dispel this um, miracle, that stays the same. And obviously, the more devoted the theist is, the more powerful that spell will be. Now, for sorcerers, they share some similarities with the theist, but others are not shared at all. So the intensity of a sorcerer's spell is actually equal to one tenth of the character's invocation skill. So in a similar way, the, the more powerful the sorcerer is, the, the higher the invocation skill, the more intense, the most ef more effects the actual sorcerer will be able to conjure. However, the magnitude of the spell is calculated slightly different. For the magnitude of sorcerer spells, the sorcerer has to apply shaping points. And generally, the more points they apply, the bigger their magnitude of the spell will be. So you can see that um, sorcerers can actually fuel their spells with huge amounts of magnitude and which will uh, prevent them being easily dispelled. There is a full table for this on page 162 of the core rulebook. So you can go and have a look at the, the points. But generally, the more, the higher the magnitude, the more points are shaping. Have to remember, though, that um, all sorcerous spells have a, a base casting time of one turn plus an additional one for anything that they change. So if they change the magnitude of the spell, then the spell will instantly become two turns in order to cast it. Now with animists, the actual spirits themselves have their own intensity and that scales off their power. So generally the more powerful the spirit is, the greater the intensity. And finally, we come to the complex mystics. Now, mystics are known to be heavy reliant on magic points. And you'll see now why that is. So the 
magnitude and the intensity of the mystic's abilities are calculated in a different way depending on what skill they're going to use. Now, essentially, the magnitude is equal to the number of magic points that they actually put into the ability. So if they are putting three magic points into the ability, then the magnitude will be three. However, the intensity is variable. For example, with augmentation skills, the mystic will have an intensity equal to each magic point they spend on that skill. Now, this intensity that they put into the augmentation of a skill actually reduces the difficulty grade of that skill by one level. So if they put in one magic point, which will mean a magnitude of one, then the intensity will be one and the difficulty of that skill will be reduced by one from standard to easy. However, if they are doing uh, an evoke trait skill, then this costs a base two magic points. So the magnitude will be two. But the intensity of an evoke trait spell or ability is always an intensity of one. It never changes. Now, this can be a little bit complicated, but there is a complete table to help you on page 156. That gives you a whole load of examples and different what the different base skills do. So if you need more information about it, then you hop over to that page in the core rule books. And that's it. The first short Mithras rule video complete. You now know everything there is to do with magnitude and intensity and how to increase these on your spells. Remember, if you have any topics that you would like me to cover in these short Mithras rule videos, then do let me know in the comments below. So, until next time, I hope that all your opposed roles are successful and reward you with a well-deserved special. Happy Mithrasic, everyone. See you later. Bye.